Hi ladies and gentlemen, it's Dr. Julian Avella. Uh, I wanted to do this video today as a follow-up to the other videos that I've done related to andropause and also to male enhancement surgery. Uh, I got a lot of questions uh, from both women and men related to, well, exactly what is it about andropause, what is andropause and exactly what is it about the surgery that is supposed to be better for a man. Uh, related to andropause. So let's start with the definition of andropause. Andropause is the natural uh, slowing effects of aging for men. It's a natural process, just like women go through menopause, men go through something similar called andropause. And although it's not related to a complete uh, elimination or reduction in testosterone levels, as a man gets older, specifically over the age of 30, his testosterone level will start to decline. Now, there's not a specific level of testosterone that it needs to hit for a man to start feeling symptoms of the natural change of life. So just like in sporting uh, uh, events or in competition, men as they get older, when they get into their 30s, are really considered to be over age for that particular sport. Well, the, part of the reason for that is that although they're still young, the level of testosterone that they have that circulates through their body is not what it was when they were in their 20s. And the response even at testosterone levels that would be normal or super physiologic, uh, above normal, don't produce the same response and endurance levels, even if you were to duplicate or substitute that testosterone level. So it is a gradual decrease in the natural response to testosterone as well as the decrease in natural levels of testosterone as a man gets older, specifically starting around the age of 30. So if we wanted to describe andropause as that slowing effect, what are you supposed to do about it? Because if it's a natural process, how do you offset it? Now you can't stop andropause just like you can't stop menopause. Uh, for women, but you can offset it by changing certain things. Specifically, some of the easiest things to do is just to modify your diet. Try to maintain uh, a natural weight uh, for your height or a BMI, the body mass index. Uh, supplements of vitamins are important and uh, a, a healthy lifestyle, lack of stress. But then you still have to address the levels of testosterone. What was a key uh, question or a comment that I've, I've read over and over and over again, especially since there's a lot of websites that are promoting the use of uh, supplementation for men or substitutes for testosterone, is that a lot of comments were from, from men and women saying, well, all you have to do is uh, have, have a healthy lifestyle and eat eat more uh, uh, fruits and vegetables, exercise more, and uh, eat, uh, take uh, vitamin supplements, and your testosterone level is going to go back to normal, and you're going to be healthier. Well, no, that's not actually true. Uh, the testosterone levels are continue to go down no matter what you do related to your health. However, you can offset those things by, yes, having a healthy lifestyle, exercising, la a lack of stress, uh, and uh, vitamin supplementation. So that's very, very important. But let's address testosterone because even the, um, the, the substitutions for testosterone, such as natural medications, that will, natural uh, uh, vitamins and supplements that will convert over testosterone, don't convert enough to substitute for the testosterone, such as DHEA, which is commonly uh, available over the counter. Now, the reason that it's available over the counter is because it is not actually testosterone. It is a, a precursor to testosterone, which your body has to convert over to testosterone. Because of that, it's not considered to be a drug, and that's why it's available over the counter. So no matter how much you supplement for DHEA, you're not going to get the, the full boost of the testosterone levels that you're looking for. That can only be replaced by testosterone itself. So here where you're talking about men getting T-shots or uh, substitutions of testosterone. And we're not talking about testosterone levels that are high enough to become anabolic in nature so that you're not going to turn someone that's taking slightly normal or sub-physiologic levels of testosterone and turn them into bodybuilders. That's not the goal of substituting with T. So if you're substituting with testosterone, which are, you can either take it in tablet form or injectable form or even in pellet form, the substitution of testosterone is generally going to be done in such a manner so there's a slow absorption of testosterone 
that does not have to buy, uh, go through the gastrointestinal tract if you're going to be using it in the best form that I've seen is going to be actually sub, uh, subcutaneous or intermuscular or even in the pellet form. Now, pellet form is, is uh, not a problem because it's going to be uh, absorbed over a period of time. But the, it does require a minor procedure, and I really don't have I really have concerns with the use of anything that you're going to be placing inside of your body, which may cause long term issues with it that it doesn't dissolve properly. Properly, so I prefer to use injectable uh, testosterone, subcutaneous or intermuscular for my patients, and generally around a hundred. Uh, milligrams of testosterone, uh, subcutaneous or intermuscular. And we found that subcutaneous or just below the skin is just as effective as intermuscular and it would be like a weekly shot. And uh, you have to use a, a determination of the free testosterone levels that a patient has and how well they're responding to the subcutaneous testosterone. So that's the T-shots or the subcut uh, subcutaneous intermuscular injectables again also in pellet form which are much much better and, and less side effects potential risk factors and issues uh, as compared to taking it in a uh, oral form as tablets so now you're offsetting the effects of uh, andropause by uh, healthy diet low stress levels um, uh, of course exercise vitamin supplementation to include vitamin d vitamin e zinc and I like to recommend the use of uh, uh, herbal supplements such as maca. Maca is actually uh, a, a, a um, plant-derived uh, 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 supplement that, can, that actually is grown in Peru, my country, my native country. Maca has been shown to improve both sperm motility, uh, sperm um, amount of, uh, of sperm, as well as amount of semen. And if, if you're not aware that for for most women aren't, but men are, the more semen that you produce and the more semen in an ejaculation, the more sensitivity it brings on, the, the higher the, the intensity of the orgasm. So if you're only going to ejaculate a small amount, that doesn't produce the same effect as if you're able to ejaculate a large amount of semen. And so if you may not be able to change the amount of sperm inside of the semen or the motility inside of the, uh, of the sperm inside of the semen, but if you're able to increase the volume overall, then that does improve uh, orgasmic intensity uh, and, and overall effect. So maca is something that's available over the counter as well as uh, other medications, which I can recommend at, at appointments that I have with my patients. So I really didn't wanna go too far into uh, those uh, different appointments because they're individualized for the patient. But yes, testosterone injections do help out. Vitamin supplementations do help out. The use of maca does help out. And uh, for to offset the symptoms and the effects of andropause. So if you do change the testosterone level and a man starts to feel differently after the age of 30, how does this affect the relationship that that person has with their current boyfriend, girlfriend, or spouse, uh, or significant other? And it does affect them. Psychologically, a man, if he notices that his... Uh, his virility, his masculinity is starting to be affected. A lot of times subconsciously, he tries to address that. Is it, is it just me? Is it my relationship? Is it some other situation going on? And unfortunately that does uh, question, put questions in the mind of some men and they start to wonder, well, is it the relationship? And it does affect the relationship that they have with a person. Uh, the, even the spouses and girlfriends do feel that something has changed. And that can affect what would be uh, as a midlife crisis. The, the guy is now wandering. He's going out with his friends, drinking more, thinking, well, I've got to get my virility back. It's not happening in this relationship. And it does affect the relationship. So we don't want that to happen as a potential uh, uh, side effect or complication of, of not addressing the real problem. So uh, I do recommend the tea shots and recommend uh, supplementation uh, exercise and the such. Uh, but also address the psychological issues that are going on with men because men are generally quiet. They don't like to tell other men, hey, listen, I'm losing it. Uh, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I don't have the virility and uh, masculinity that I had when I was younger. Usually they're talking about this having a couple beers. And so it's kind of more of a joke than anything. And that's okay. That's an easier stress level release. But in reality, you're not addressing the real problem. 
So if you do address those problems in, in, in consultation with a sex therapist, with someone that is, or at least someone that's trained uh, or uh, open-minded about addressing it, especially from a, a medical standpoint, you can see your urologist, you can see your family practitioner, your, uh, your uh, primary care physician. And generally men speak better to men, just like in general women speak better to women about women issues for women and men issues for men. So uh, not that I'm saying that a woman can't uh, give an open-minded answer, just I think men in general are more comfortable speaking with other men about their male-related issues. So it's important to find someone you feel comfortable with and not just ignore it or sweep it under the rug because it does come back as an issue even subconsciously. And this does affect male performance, male performance in the bedroom or even an avoidance of having sexual uh, intercourse or, or even... Um, uh, being uh, uh, affectionate because when there is affection there might lead to uh, the desire to have intercourse and the desire to have intercourse may lead to uh, uh, wanting to have intercourse or initiating intercourse and if you're suffering from performance anxiety uh, you're not able to reach an erection like you wanted to before or you may not even be able to get an erection and then there's also the uh, the, pro the possibility of premature ejaculation which significantly affects men uh, more than one out of three sometimes especially as they go through ander andropause and uh, we, we have that issue. So uh, it's very, very important to get into the, into the psychological uh, changes that occur with andropause. Uh, and the last subject that I wanted to talk about is, well, if you're going to have issues with performance anxiety and you're going to have issues about, about uh, uh, premature ejaculation, what can you change, physically change, to make things better? Now, obviously, the... the the, the penis is not a muscle. You can't exercise it to make it larger. Unlike other parts of the body, you can exercise, you can lose weight, you can, you can gain muscle mass, but you can't really change things uh, by exercising the penis. Uh, believe me, there's plenty of men that have tried, but uh, getting off uh, the subject, there, is, there are things that are non-surgical that can uh, modify the, the, the girth and the size of the penis. Now, we're talking about surgical versus non-surgical. Surgical means, obviously, that it's more complicated. It, it has potential uh, more side effects, more issues, uh, and more cost. And surgery is generally not reversible. Uh, so we like, for, for this particular subject matter, we'd like to talk about non-surgical. So how do you modify the penis in a non-surgical fashion? Well, what we're talking about here is the use of either, uh, specifically the use of fillers, because if you're thinking about uh, enlarging the, the penis with something you may have heard of as fat transfer, fat transfer is actually a surgery because you have to uh, cultivate the, the, the fat from another source, another area, such as liposuction. You have to uh, filtrate it, you've got to prepare it properly, and then you've got to infiltrate it into the penis, and that would be a surgery. So I'm not really talking about fat transfer. It is an option available to men. Uh, another potential surgical option is the place of, of a silicone uh, implant inside of the penis. The problem that I have with the placement of silicone implants is just like what we have with silicone implants for breast augmentation or implants in general as a foreign body. If you place a silicone implant in the penis, although it may look larger, it may look bigger, um, you have a potential risk of a foreign body reaction where that implant will be rejected. Now, I've done a lot of research in these implants, and I haven't found any documentation as to the actual uh, potential uh, risks of a, of a rejection of the implant. And I think that's done on purpose, because if it has the same potential risk of rejection as other parts of the body, other implants, we're looking at about a 5%. Now that doesn't sound a lot, but if you have an implant in your penis and there's a 5% chance that you may have a serious complication to the foreign body reaction to that implant and you have to have it removed, it's not an easy removal in the sense that it, it's very expensive, potentially cause even more problems and even more harm by placing an implant in the penis than you had uh, related to other parts of the body. So that's my concern with the, with the use of silicone implants for uh, penile enlargement. Fat 
uh, trans, uh, transfer to the penis can be irregular. Uh, fat is not uh, wasn't designed to, uh, by the body to be absorbed through into the penis, and therefore there can be uh, a significant loss of the fat, irregularities of the fat, and you don't and that can lead to scarring. So that's the reason why surgical options related to uh, penile enlargement are not generally what's recommended uh, or what I'm not talking about today. Uh, now let's talk about uh, non-surgical options for uh, penis enlargement. Now there's plenty of people that have seen online taking vitamin supplements that's supposed to enlarge your penis. It does not. Uh, there's plenty of uh, advertisements of using the penile pumps to, to that provides a suction on the uh, penis and it's supposed to be uh, something that enlarges in the penis. It does not. So what does, what has been shown to be effective, uh, safe and effective in general for the use of, in, uh, for, to enlarge the penis? And that would be uh, dermal fillers, uh, specifically hyaluronic, uh, hyaluronic acid, uh, which is uh, uh, what I, I have recommended for my patients. Uh, uh, the use of fillers that are a little bit heavier in weight, such as uh, Juvederm, or specifically the one that happens to be the safest and the best that I've seen is actually be would actually be Voluma XC, which is uh, another product by, uh, under the Juvederm series. Now, I don't recommend other types of fillers because they're not reversible. Uh, uh, the 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 semi the, the non permanent that are not uh, hyaluronic acid based or the semi permanent or permanent fillers they're very if you have a complication they're very very difficult to remove from the penis and therefore so it's my recommendation is to focus in on use on filler that if it's not looking uh, appropriate or if it doesn't look if it's not to the satisfaction of the patient it's relatively easy to get rid of by just applying a um, hyaluronidase, uh, which is, an, is a, um, an enzyme which dissolves the filler. And this generally can be done with, in less than 24 hours if the patient isn't happy with the appearance. So fillers that we're talking about, such as the Voluma XC, are generally uh, applied in the cheeks and in, in the facial area uh, for, uh, for volume. Now they're off-label to be uh, when used on the penis, but the overall effect is exact is this, is similar or very similar to that that you get in the cheeks. Uh, the the use of Voluma uh, generally is based uh, the number of fillers is generally based on how large the penis is, how, what's its natural girth, and what's its at natural length, because you're actually trying to increase an entire volume of something that would be similar to a cylinder. So if you have a small cylinder, it doesn't take a lot to, to expand on that size. But well, if you have a much larger cylinder, it's gonna take a lot more. It's just like a gas tank. If you have a small gas tank, it doesn't take a lot to fill it. If you have a, if you have a truck gas tank, it's gonna take five or six times the amount to, uh, of gasoline to fill that particular a gas tank. The same thing applies to uh, the penis. So if you have a relatively, on the relatively smaller side in both length and girth, uh, you're going to get a, a, a more of an effect if you use uh, the same number of fillers, but if you have a, a above average size penis and you want to make it even larger, then you're going to need a lot more fillers to be able to do that. What I have found, and as a general um, uh, comparison, if the penis is three and a half uh, inches long by three and a half inches in girth or circumference, uh, generally speaking, 10 fillers to 15 fillers is what it's going to take to increase the flaccid state of three and a half round to uh, up to five inches round. Now, these fillers are not going to significantly increase the length of the penis because uh, the, the, the length doesn't change too much. It's the girth or the circumference. And in, in a majority of, of studies that have been done, women do state that they would rather have a thicker penis uh, uh, for their partner rather than a slightly, uh, uh, a significantly longer penis. Now, there are women that are going to want, um, you know, a, um, a, a different opinion on that. But in general, girth is more important than length. If it's wider, it seems to be more important. And maybe it's because it stimulates the, the G spot or the U spot in the female as compared to length where the, the length would stimulate other erogenous zones such as the A spot and the P spot in the female. Nevertheless, the fillers that we're talking about are going to significantly increase the girth rather than the length of the penis. So 
if we're talking about it, uh, a flaccid state penis of three and a half inches in length as three and a half inches in circumference, you're going to be able to get that up to up to maybe five inches in circumference. Now, why is that important? Because studies have suggested that the average uh, girth of an erect penis is four and a half. So if you do 10 to 15 fillers and in, in, in a three and a half uh, uh, inch flaccid penis, you're going to get the girth which is larger than what you'll get in the average man who's already erect. Now, why is this important? Because, well, if you happen to be at the gym, if you happen to be in a locker room, you're taking a shower, you know, after you've been, you've been to the gym and you're taking a shower. And uh, although men don't look at men, obviously at a time, it's all there. So they're, they're going to get a, they're going to get a, a passing look or something and if you have a very small penis or a penis that's smaller than average that does leave an impression both for yourself and those people that are looking at you and again it's not a matter of just focusing in on that it's just a glancing view but it is something that 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 is left in the mind of whoever happened to see you in the locker room and uh it it it, it does it, it can become a, a subject of conversation later uh, women basically have no qualms about speaking about the, the, the size of their partners. Uh, and it's just girl talk, just like it's guy talk. And so if you have a small penis, it, it is going to be the topic of conversation. And inevitably, everybody's going to know that that's exactly it. You think that that's a, uh, um, a secret. And in reality, everybody does know either you're, you're average, you're below average, you're above average. If you have girl, if you have friends, they know. I mean, it's and they may even be blurted out in, in a joke, but it is something that that is common knowledge, uh, especially if you have uh, close friends and you've had those friends for for a while. So the the one benefit, one simple benefit of the use of fillers is that in the flaccid state, when you're walking around, when you're in the locker room, when you're wearing clothes, when you're wearing jeans, uh, the natural bulge that that is presented from a filler uh, um, uh, procedure is going to be above average. So your presentation just in and of itself is going to be above average. Now, this of course is different than when it's erect because if it's five inches uh, girth erect, it's going to be probably six inches in girth when, uh, excuse me, if it's five centimeters in girth when not erect after a uh, filler in the flaccid state, it's probably going to be well, it's going to be at least six uh, when erect, uh, and uh, and of course this is probably when it's most intimate, when you're most intimate with the person that you're with. But yes, that's a very impressive size. If you were before three and a half, and now uh, maybe four, four and a half when you're erect, now you're uh, in a flaccid state. You're five, and now you're going to six when erect. That's an impressive change, a very significant change if you're thinking about in terms of volume. So this is exceptionally important and it is something that's uh, reliable, it is validated, and it's not gonna be like wasting, medic, um, wasting your money on um, pills or the uh, penis pump. And this is something that we're talking about that has been validated that works. And how long will it, how, how long is the procedure? What's the procedure? Well, just like, like you can see in fillers for the face and there's some YouTube, uh, uh, video on the use of Voluma fillers and I, I encourage you to go to YouTube and uh, take a look at those uh, th those um, um, uh, videos on it. Uh, the procedure is re relatively straightforward. It can be done uh, in less than 10 minutes. It Except for the initial needle stick with a little bit of lidocaine, most people, most men will feel hardly anything at all even when they use the microcannulas below the skin. And that's the key because most men are worried that they're going to feel something or it's going to be painful. And in reality, except for a very minor uh, uh, needle stick at the beginning, everything is numbed after that point. And uh, the, the, the infiltration below the, uh, excuse me, the uh, placement of the filler below the uh, penal uh, skin uh, takes less than 10 minutes, even for 8 to 10 fillers. The longest part of the entire uh, uh, procedure is going to be informed consent, just going over all the potential issues with the use of Voluma, especially since it's off-label, and uh, the potential issues that you may have uh, at a later date. Does it dissolve? It does dissolve over time. This uh, particular 
hyaluronic acid will dissolve uh, up to two years. We've seen it longer than two years. And uh, I kind of take it like this. Yes, it's an expensive investment, but it's not painful. It takes less than 10 minutes. You can go back to work uh, probably that within an hour or so, although uh, notes can be given so somebody can take a day off or longer. Uh, the recommendation is not to have intercourse for a couple days simply because of the needle sticks. It's a little bit uncomfortable there. Uh, there might be some minor swelling or some minor bruising. And so you really don't want to have intercourse after you have had a couple little needle sticks in, your, in, in, in the skin of your penis. Uh, but within two to three days, you're feeling much better. And there is no issue. And actually, if you do have spontaneous erections, the filler will spread across the penis on the top and bottom and uh, frontwards and, and back as a cylinder, as it were, at the entire length of the penis. And therefore, the more erections that you have in general, the, the, the filler tends to spread by itself. So there isn't a fear that, oh, I can't have an erection because something's going to happen. In reality, if it happens, it happens. There's no need to worry about that or any medication to prevent it from happening. Uh, over uh, the, the most common issue with the, with the filler is going to be minor swelling for as your body responds to the filler and it gets used to it. And actually, uh, some, some men think, oh my God, the, the, my penis is really large now. It doesn't stay that size. It will go back to a smaller size. And some men are actually disappointed. Wow, I really liked it, how large it looked. But now you have to settle for the fact that it's smaller than that. Nevertheless, it's a very, very safe uh, product to use when in the proper hands of a, of, a, of, a, of a doctor that knows how to place the fillers, it can be placed evenly. And even if there's some minor irregularities, uh, that can be adjusted for from some touch-ups that can be done at a later time, usually within four to six weeks. What we have found is that uh, in the majority of men that do get fillers, they wish they would go back and get even more filler. And the limitation is not, not how much you can place, but actually the cost. These fillers run around here uh, locally, run around $500 per filler. Uh, now, in comparison, this, it's cost about the same to do your lips. But in a lip filler, you're only going to use one filler, maybe two fillers. In the penis, you're going to use 10 to 15. So the cost is uh, a significant investment at first at between $4,000 and $5,000. But when lasting more than uh, two years or even longer and occasional touch-ups where you might want even more, uh, it is uh, technically a cost-effective as comparison to how much you're spending going to the gym, how much you're spending uh, going to the movies, going out drinking with your friends, socializing, how much does each one of those drinks cost when you're buying drinks for your friends, um, and uh, every other thing that you might be spending money on as a discretionary uh, expense. This is an investment that you'll probably uh, be uh, very happy with the results within just a few days uh, and maybe even thinking about even doing more in just a few weeks. So that's the key to the, to the use of the filler. If you do have an issue with it, it is reversible by a very minor uh, injection of another medication that will dissolve the original filler. Uh, the, the reaction of the of the female partner or your partner to an enlarged penis is significant heard wow i really felt a difference it really improved the sex life uh this these are all commentaries i i've not yet come across one where it's been a negative response oh my god your penis is too big I, that i haven't heard about unfortunately we have heard stories where a man with a small penis has actually been laughed at or rejected and a woman won't even have it attempt to have intercourse with a with a with a man with a small penis, but for men that are slightly above average size, women are impressed by that. And I'm not trying to say in, in any negative way. It's not like by having your penis larger that that a, that a woman is going to say no, it's too large. Uh, but there is generally a negative connotation for a penis being too small. So I'm giving you this information because I don't want uh, the the uh, I don't want male part uh, male partners uh, men in general not to have proper information just like I provided information on all the other subjects that I do. Yes, I'm a cosmetic surgeon, cosmetic gynecologist, but I see male patients too because in doing me uh, 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 female vaginal rejuvenation or virginal size restoration, I always encourage the male partner to come in and and so that we can talk about how to improve the sex life of the patient. And so I'm well aware 
of what the uh, what the concerns are for male partners and male uh, and men in general. And uh, so I think that we can keep an open mind about it and give proper information rather than uh, men uh, spending money uh, on things that won't work or spending money on things that are not reversible. And that's the key uh, to this particular video. I want men to know that they have options, that there are things that really do work, and to not be disappointed in the sense that they've, they've invested money somewhere else when there are options available as non-surgical, non-surgical, uh, that will show a change relatively quickly and that uh, they will probably be very happy, if not even more happy, uh, about the choice they made, which they would have made it er earlier or sooner in their life. Uh, so that's the information that I wanted to provide. I hope that you'll share this video with all of your male friends uh, or just tag tag it. I will place it on YouTube under Dr. Navoa, the, um, the, daddy, the daddy do-over. Okay, that's what I'm calling There's a mommy makeover, there's a daddy do-over. And hopefully this will improve the 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 self-esteem, um, the the uh, sexual awareness for men, and uh, open up better lines of communication with your partners and for women that are, have uh, their partners that you would like them to, to understand what the, the natural change over time is with um, uh, andropause is and that there are options available to improve that, overall improve the sex life of, of uh, uh, for both men and women and with some real answers, some uh, true information and not things that you're just getting off the internet. I hope this was informative. I wish you the best. If you have any questions, feel free to make uh, an appointment at our office. Uh, it's very discreet or you can uh, email us at um, drnovoa.nms at gmail.com. That's dr. Dot, uh, dr. Novoa, D-R-N-O-V-O-A dot N-M-S at gmail.com. Thank you very much.